Hey everyone, this is The Next Archer. Today we're going to be doing a video showing off a Willem Stand Camp custom knife. This is a knife that I have a decently long story about why I picked it up, um, what made me notice it, the ordering process, actually receiving the knife, getting lost in the mail, all that stuff. Um, very interesting story, so I'm actually going to say that before I go into the full review. I don't normally do that, I almost never do stories on my channel, but I'm going to try it today as this is a very neat knife, very much like it, and I think it actually deserves this story. So if you're wanting to watch the story, stay here. If you don't, I'll have a link in the description or a time code in the description that lets you get straight to the review. Okay, so we're gonna have to start off this story showing a knife that's somewhat like my first custom. And my first custom was a Peter Carey Mini Nitro. A lot like this one, except it had orange G10 with a black or carbon fiber bolster. I really like the knife. I should have kept it, but I ended up selling it. Um, prices on Peter Carey's have skyrocketed since then. Um, you can see this one. Fantastic. Really like custom Peter Carey's. However, you can't get on Peter Carey's order list. I've tried probably four or five times, and it sounds like he's actually never going to open up his order list again, which that's very bad when you want to get a specific type. Also, I got this one back maybe two years ago, Blade Show 2013, from a dealer for $700. This knife would probably go for maybe 17 to 2100 now. So, hugely expensive now. Even if I could find the configuration I wanted, I couldn't really afford it, especially for an everyday carry knife. So, that's what led me to this knife. When I was walking around Blade Show 2014, I think I had just actually um, not gotten anything at the Peter Carey Lottery. So I was walking around and saw this one. Nor not this one, but it, there was one, this same model, that had a black bolster, tan G10, no pocket clip, and I handled it, I looked at it, and was like, that somewhat reminds me of a Mini Nitro. Fantastic action. Of course, totally different maker, a different style blade, but it still had the quality of what a Peter Carey would be. However, it was very much an affordable knife where I definitely could not afford really to carry a Peter Carey. How much was this at the table at the time? It was $240, or what that model was. So I talked to this knife maker, Willem Steenkamp of South Africa. He was at a table called Knife Africa. That's also the website that they sell knives on. And I said, I really like your knife, and I want to make an order. Or could you customize a knife with black G10, or blue and black G10? He was like, sure. Um, he, I could order it, or email him the order, and come back to Blade Show the next year and pick it up. Or Blade Show this year and pick it up. So I was like, sure. Sounds fantastic. Um, so I emailed him about maybe two weeks after Blade Show 2014 and placed my order. I said, I want blue G10, black bolster, a pivot that I can see and adjust, and a pocket clip that was tip up. And as you can see, that is what is on this knife. Well, so... I ended up kind of being a little anxious for the knife, so I was wondering if he could ship it to me. Well, so about a month after I placed the order, so about a month and two weeks after Blade Show 2014, he ends up saying he's made the knife, he makes them in batches of five, and he shipped it off to me. Like, okay. Um, I was like, when do you want payment now? He was like, no, pay me once the knife gets there and you're happy. I was like, okay. Well, a month and maybe 
a month or two goes by and I email him kind of wondering if what's happened to the knife. I didn't want him to think that I got it and then just ran off with it. Um, so I was kind of wondering if he had a tracking code. Something because I really was excited for this. Um, it's a very neat knife. Well, turns out that in South Africa, their postal system was had some issues. It was actually going on strike. It still is. So apparently, it, I think he had sent me a tracking code, maybe, and it had like arrived in New York and then went back maybe to South Africa. And apparently it's like just in a warehouse in South Africa. Well, so he told me, don't worry about it. Once it gets back here, it, I will get the knife and have one of my friends, when they go to the United States, he'll ship it to you. It's like, okay, I can wait for it. Um, I'm glad that I'm not going to the po or the mailbox every day, super excited, thinking, oh, maybe today's the day. Uh, and I do that with all the knives that I get. So I'm patient, and then I decide, okay, I'm not going to email them anymore. Well, I'm not worried about it, and I'll just pick it up at Blade Show 2015. So I email him a month before Blade Show 2015 asking if he got the knife back, and um, I'd like to buy it still. At Blade Show, I'll be there. Um, well, he said, it's still lost in the mail. It's basically lost for good, apparently. And he'll make me a new one, same specs, but for the same price. He's risen his prices considerably since then, but he's going to honor his old price and make it exactly to my old specs. Basically the exact same knife, um, just a new one that's not stuck in the mail. So I'm like, perfect. I he had sent me the original pictures of the knife and I sent him those back and made sure that they were the same specs because I really liked and was really excited for the variation or the special features that were on this knife. Well, so I get to Blade Show, I get the knife, and it's exactly what I wanted. Um, it has the blue G10, black bolster, the pivot, as well as the pocket clip, which are very cool, as well as features that I didn't even know or really realize were on his knives before. Um, it was just a very outstanding um, time, as well as when I was actually buying this knife, so I paid him for this one, and he told me, if the other one ever shows up, that I should just keep it and not worry about it, because he's already written them, written it off on my or on his books, so that is very cool, and a fantastic um, business. Or he's a very good guy. I have to say that. So now let's actually get into the video showing off the knife. As I've kind of told the story, um, I do want to say I absolutely love this knife. Although it was originally kind of a replacement for a Peter Carey Custom. Um, I do like it as its own knife. The knife maker is amazing, even though I may have not known that when I had first seen the knife, um, I do think of him as his own maker and not a replacement or a secondary because I could not get something else. So I don't want to offend thinking, oh, it's because I couldn't get something better. So don't want to offend anybody that way because this is now the knife that I carry on a daily basis. Okay, let's get into the actual review and take a look at it. So as I had said multiple times previously, it has blue G10 as the scale and a black G10 bolster. If you look right here, you can actually see the blue G10 extends underneath of the black bolster. So that is a very nice attention to detail. That takes a lot more work than just cutting off the blue G10 and having a pure black bolster. So very nice attention to detail. You can see right here, there's absolutely no gap. You can't feel one. You can hear that. 
no gap right there. So very cool. That's on both sides, perfectly symmetrical. You can see it doesn't have the blue G10 right there, but that's because there's a little cutout. It does have it following through that. Next, about still with the handle, you can see it actually is contoured. So it is smooth G10, but it actually it's thicker back here and thins as you go forward. So you get a nice area for your hand. Okay. Inside you have titanium liners that have been anodized blue. They have also been jeweled. Let's see if you can kind of see that. So you can see kind of a machine like circles in there. It's very cool. Um, one thing that I wasn't too sure um, why it was added at first was you can see there's, let's move it down here. Yeah, you can see there's actually a cutout all along that side of the liner and that's actually to make it easier to open and close the knife or to close the knife because you just extend it a little bit more and it goes completely past the detent. Inside you also see the detent ramp to make it much easier to open and close. Going up slightly more, you have the ball bearings. So this is a cage, or not a caged bearing system, but it does run on bearings. When I had originally ordered this knife, I don't believe he used bearings. So that's an upgrade that I had not previously seen on this knife. You'll go up to the blade, which is an N690 blade steel. So you can see that on his card right here. So the model number FLL13, blade steel N690, and of course the black and blue G10. So there's his card, if you're wanting to see that. Um, so he's a part of the Knife Makers Guild of South Africa. It also comes, I didn't show actually what the knife came with, so it came with a very nice pouch right here, as well as this bag. It shows up kind of purple in the video for some reason, but it's actually a black bag. Okay, back to the knife. So, N690 blade steel with a, or with mirror finished flats and a satin a very nice satin finish grind. This is a hollow grind, I believe. Yeah, that's a hollow grind. You can see his logo right there. W.F. Steenkamp Knives. I believe he has a son as well that makes knives. On the flipper, you see some even more attention to detail. A hole drilled in the flipper just for design. Slight swedge on top. That is on both sides. Somewhat difficult to film this, and especially to keep fingerprints off of it. Which I probably should have ordered it with maybe a DLC coated finish or something like that because I am going to be carrying it. Maybe a stone wash. Maybe I'll order another one and have it that finish, but you can see absolutely fantastic finish. No jimping or anything on this knife. Doesn't really need it. Very thin grind. Okay. You can see the lock up. It's nice and early and the centering is also perfect. The pocket clip on here is blue anodized titanium also with two screws. The original one was in a little bit of a different position. Um, he doesn't do the pocket clip standard 
In fact, the things that I, let's see, it's not willing to adjust. All right, so the modifications that I asked for did not normally come standard. In fact, I believe in South Africa you're not supposed to have pocket clips. I'm not sure, I'm, I don't know their law, but you don't normally see pocket clips on South African knives. However, he did an absolutely wonderful job, has the perfect amount of grab on there. You also see some countersunk holes, just slightly countersunk. All the screws are also slightly countersunk, so they're not sticking out. This one is slightly, but you do get to see that on top. Okay. With this, I believe it actually is a um, special type of pivot that needs to have a special tool to adjust. So I may need to pick one of those up at some point. But for now, it does not need adjusting. Okay, let's actually show the action of this knife. There we go. Flips absolutely flawlessly. You can either do the push button approach or the, I guess, light switch. So the push button and the light switch. <laughs> An absolutely gorgeous knife. I'm definitely going to order another knife from him. Actually, oh, forgot some more details about him. So there's just so many details that you won't notice at first look. And then once you look deeper, you get more and more detailed. So let's actually get into the light. So we have what I believe is a G10 backspacer, as well as a bunch of file work in the back of the titanium. Absolutely fantastic right there. But yeah, you don't see details like that, or the G10 going underneath of the bolster going thick to thin file work and then jeweling inside of the anodized liners you don't even see anodized liners on knives under like 700 bucks nowadays so absolutely fantastic knife I'll definitely be trying to get another one. Actually, the model that I'm thinking about getting next from them, especially if I go to Blade Show again next year, will be the Backpacker. It's actually a fixed blade. Um, I believe, well, it's somewhat similar blade style, I believe, um, but it is a fixed blade. But there you go. That is the Willem Steenkamp Custom. Let's see, the FL. L13. And now I have the hiccups. Gosh. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot different than my other ones. At least I told a little bit of a story. And some of you may like the story. Some of you may not. But wow. Just so many things, attention to detail, that make this knife fantastic. So, let's do one more time showing the knife in detail for you guys. I don't know what his current price is for something like this. I just know that he's raised his prices. And that you'll have to wait a while in order to actually purchase one because um, the Af or South African 
mailing system is non-functioning right now. So somebody will actually have to ship it when they come to the United States. And that's just another reason why you should go to Blade Show, is to buy one of his knives. So, there you go. There is currently one of my favorite knives in my collection, as well as my everyday carry knife. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. If you liked this type of video, let me know. I'll try to do stories like this later. I do have stories about how I got basically all my knives. and I, You guys may enjoy it. You may not. Um, I enjoyed making this. So, eh. See you guys later. Have a great day. Bye. Here's the knife in the pocket. has a decent amount sticking out so that you can grab a hold of that. It's not a super deep carry, which I'm okay with either one. And let's actually show it cutting now. It has that finger twill that I actually forgot to mention. And I have actually sharpened it since I'd gotten it because I have been carrying it. So there you go. You also get to see a bonus feature of my hairy legs. <laughs> There's the knife though.